Hello, good morning, dear students. Welcome to Interactive Virtual Class Nagaland once again. I hope all of you are doing well. Yes, students, so we will begin with a new chapter today. Okay, so let us see. So here we see a boy washing his hands, all right, after coming back from school. Okay, then he asks his mother, Mom, I am hungry. Okay, so his mother brought him some sweets with water okay now have after eating the sweets the boy said wow it is delicious okay then the mother replied of course it is made from pure ghee okay so the sweets is made from the snacks is made from pure ghee okay then again here we see two women okay conversing with one another one of the ladies said Wow, that is a very pretty necklace. Okay, after looking at the necklace of the other woman. Okay, one of the ladies said, Wow, that is a very pretty necklace. Okay, and she asks, How much did it cost you? Okay, how much did you pay to buy this? Then the other lady replied, It cost me rupees 80,000. Okay, then the other replied, Really? Is that how is that very expensive? Then the other lady replied, of course, necklace is made of pure gold. Okay. And again here, we see two boys drinking water. One of the boy asks, is this drinkable? Okay. Then the other boy replied, yes, it looks, it looks clean and pure. Okay. So here, ghee, ornamental gold, drinking water. And these are some of the matter around us. Yes. So, are they really pure? Okay, are they really pure? So, in today's class, we will begin with this chapter, Is Matter Around Us Pure? Okay, so we have discussed in our previous class, matter in our surroundings, correct? So, do you recall what is matter? Yes, students, we have the first question for today. Let's get your rough devices ready and respond to this question, okay? So, matter is anything that occupies space and has dash. Okay, I'm giving you 15 seconds for this question. Your time starts now. Matter is anything that occupies space and has. Option A is volume. Option B is mass. Option C is weight. And option D is density. Yes, students. All right, students, your time is up. And yes, very good. The correct answer is option B, that is mass. Matter is anything that occupies space and has mass okay so now that we know what is matter in this class we will discuss if the matter around us are pure or not okay is matter around us pure okay so let us see we have sea water ghee milk air these are all matter around us there are different matter around us that we use day to day to day lives that we use every day we eat we breathe right so these are some of the matter around us are they really pure okay let us see so here continue with the conversation between the son and the family now the boy is talking with his father okay then he asks his father dad why are you laughing okay then the father replied pintu many things that we see in our surroundings are not pure okay scientifically okay ghee is not a pure substance ghee is a mixture of fat protein and many other substances okay so this is the ghee so here the father is explaining to the boy that ghee is not a pure substance and again he also said scientifically even drinking water is not a pure substance it consists of different minerals okay so here we see that water is also not a pure substance then the father at that saying, generally almost all substance are mixture of different components. Okay, so generally all the substance around us are mixture of different components. Here we have sea water. So sea water is also a mixture. Here we see stones and sand, right? And here we see the ear moving. Okay, so sea water, sand and stones, air, all these are matter, matter around us. And these are examples of mixtures. 
okay so all generally matters around us are not pure their combination of different components okay so these are examples of mixtures but what is mixtures okay or what are mixtures so mixtures are constituted by more than one kind of pure form of matter known as a substance okay so mixtures are constituted okay or mixture are made up of two or more pure substances okay so sea water example okay example is sea water so sea water is constituted of salts and water so it is not pure correct so let us take here okay we have water in beaker we have salt here add a spoonful of salt into the beaker okay now we get salt and water mixture now we get salt and water mixture in this beaker now when we heat it okay the water will start boiling it will it will evaporate and at the bottom only salt will remain yes so here we were able to separate the components of mixture when we mix water and salt we get mixture of water and salt but when we heat it the water evaporated now we are left only with salt yes students so this we separated the different components of mixture by evaporation method so mixtures are constituted by more than one kind of pure form of matter known as a substance mixtures can be separated into its components by physical methods evaporation is one example okay so mixtures can be separated into its components by physical methods water okay let us see the water that we drink is also not pure okay it is it consists of or it is constituted by calcium magnesium potassium sodium all these are some of the minerals present in water another example is soil okay the soil it consists of or it is constituted by minerals organic substances air water etc okay so soil is also a mixture it is constituted by one or more components okay another example we have here is ear ear the ear around us okay the ear that we breathe is also a mixture it consists of nitrogen different gases like nitrogen oxygen water vapors carbon dioxide argon etc okay and out of the different gases present in the air nitrogen constitutes 78 percent oxygen constitute 21 percent okay now coming to this salt okay is salt a mixture or pure substance salt is consists of sodium and chlorine right so sodium chloride okay the chemical name of salt is sodium chloride sodium chloride is itself a substance and cannot be separated by physical process into its chemical constituents okay so salt is made up of or sodium chloride is made up of sodium and chloride okay sodium and chlorine but this sodium and chlorine that constitute the salt cannot be separated by cannot be separated by physical process okay so their composition is same throughout the composition of sodium and chlorine in salt is same throughout okay so such substances are called pure substances salt is constituted of sodium and chlorine okay they have the same composition throughout and their constituents chemical constituents cannot be separated by physical process so salt is an example of pure substance okay now what is pure substance a pure substance is one which is made up of only one kind of particles okay so here we have 24 karat gold is the pure gold it is made up of only gold particles distilled water is pure it contains only water okay so here are the examples of pure substance all right students we have another question please get your rough devices ready the question is which one of the following may be termed as a pure substance okay I'm giving you 15 seconds for this question your time starts now which one of the following may be termed as a pure substance option a is sodium chloride option b is soft drink option c is aerosol and option d is soil all right students your time is up let us see we have seen that 
soil is mixture yes it consists of different materials okay different minerals organic substance air water so this is not a pure substance aerosol aerosol is also not a pure substance it consists of different particles okay soot particles different gases so aerosol is also not a pure substance soft drink okay soft drink is also not a pure substance it consists of water carbon dioxide okay so these three b c d are not pure substance but we have seen that sodium chloride also commonly known as salt is a pure substance correct so here the correct answer is option a that is sodium chloride very good students now let us see here salt and water okay take water in beaker and add some amount of salt into the beaker containing water so we have salt plus water correct another example we have is potassium permanganate take potassium permanganate take water in beaker and add some amount of potassium permanganate into the beaker stir it let the potassium permanganate dissolve in water so we have potassium permanganate plus water okay now take potassium permanganate and take salt okay take a spoonful of potassium permanganate place it in another petri plate and take some amount of salt and put into the petri plate and mix potassium permanganate with salt okay so here also we have another example of mixture so we have salt plus potassium permanganate mixture so here we have prepared three examples of mixture the first is the salt plus water the second is potassium permanganate plus water and the third is salt plus potassium permanganate now when you dissolve salt in water okay no matter from spoon of this mixture from the bottom or from the top the saltiness will be the same correct if the salt is dissolved in water yes students so in the first two examples that is salt plus water and potassium permanganate plus water there is even distribution okay there is even distribution of the components of the mixture whereas in the third example that is salt plus potassium permanganate there is uneven distribution some in this portion we see that it is more black right so here more amount of potassium permanganate is present but around this area it is more white so around this area more amount of salt is present so in the first two examples there is even distribution in the second in the third example there is uneven distribution so when the components have the same composition and it is evenly distributed it is known as homogeneous and if it is not evenly distributed or if it is unevenly distributed it is known as heterogeneous so mixtures are of two types okay mixture generally are of two types one is the homogeneous mixture and the second is the heterogeneous mixture so these are the two types of mixtures homo means same and hetero means different so in homogeneous mixture the composition will be same throughout whereas in heterogeneous mixture the composition will be will not be uniform or will not be the same throughout okay so homogeneous mixtures mixture which has uniform composition throughout are called homogeneous mixtures okay all right students we have another question please get your rough devices ready the question is solution which has uniform composition throughout is called which of the following okay i'm giving you 15 seconds for this question your time starts now solution which has uniform composition throughout is called option a homogeneous option b heterogeneous option c colloidal and option d is none of this all right students your time is up and yes very good the correct answer is option a that is homogeneous solution which has uniform composition throughout is called homogeneous solution all right students let us take this example again water and soap add some amount of salt into a beaker containing water and let it dissolve okay in another beaker take copper sulfate 
and dissolve it in water in a beaker okay then we have another example take a beaker containing water add some amount of potassium per manganate and let it dissolve okay so here we have these three examples salt in water copper sulfate in water potassium per manganate in water we see that in all these examples they are evenly distributed okay there is uniform composition throughout so these are the examples of homogeneous mixtures now let us see here we have this potassium permanganate in water this is the potassium permanganate in water mixture of potassium permanganate in water now when we dilute it okay here we see that the color is getting lighter and lighter okay but we see that it is still uniformly distributed even though the amount of potassium permanganate is decreasing okay so homogeneous mixture can have a variable composition in the first beaker this beaker there is large amount of potassium permanganate the amount of potassium permanganate decreases as we go on yes but they are still homogeneous mixture okay so homogeneous mixtures can have a variable composition now coming to heterogeneous mixtures what are heterogeneous mixtures mixtures which contain physically distinct parts and have no uniform compositions are called heterogeneous mixture okay i'm repeating mixtures which contain physically distinct parts and have no uniform compositions are called heterogeneous mixture taking the example of water and sand when we mix water with sand it will not dissolve yes this sand will settle at the bottom so the there is distinct parts of the salt sand and the water so mixture of sand and water is one example of heterogeneous mixture another example is this smoke okay in smoke there are different types of gases present there are also some particles right small small particles so smoke is also another example of heterogeneous mixture another example we have here is mixture of water and oil when we mix water and oil we will see two distinct layers the water will be at the bottom and the oil will be at the top okay mixture of oil and water so these are some of the examples of heterogeneous mixtures okay so students let us try to differentiate between homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures so mixture which has uniform composition throughout are called homogeneous mixtures whereas mixtures which contain physically distinct parts and have no uniform compositions are called heterogeneous mixtures example of homogeneous mixture include salt in water copper sulfate in water potassium permanganate in water examples of heterogeneous mixture include sand in water okay smoke and mixture of oil in water okay you can give more examples or you can cite more examples of your own okay all right students we have another question please get your rough devices ready the question is choose the homogeneous mixture okay choose the homogeneous mixture so i'm giving you 15 seconds for this question okay first option is wood second option b is blood option c is charcoal and option d is sugar syrup so i'm giving you 15 seconds your time starts now choose the homogeneous mixture option a is wood option b is blood option c is charcoal and option d is sugar syrup yes students so when we look at the option wood is not a homogeneous mixture blood is also not a homogeneous mixture it consists of rbc's wbc's platelets right charcoal is also not a homogeneous mixture but sugar syrup is a homogeneous mixture so our correct answer will be option d that is sugar syrup okay very good students activity okay differentiate the below mixtures into homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures so this will be your homework okay students please note down differentiate the below mixtures into homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture sand plus common salt ear 
coffee, fruit salad, small stones plus large stones. Okay, so identify which of the given example is this homogeneous mixture and which of the following is heterogeneous mixture. All right, students, know this. Okay, the mixture can be solid solid mixture. Okay, so solid solid mixture meaning we come we mix two solid the components of the mixture will be both solid. So example of homogeneous solid solid mixture is brass. Okay, brass is made of of copper plus zinc so when we mix copper and zinc we get brass both copper and zinc are solid so we have solid solid mixtures and brass is homogeneous meaning it has uniform composition throughout example of heterogeneous solid solid mixture is sand plus common salt know this okay bronze brass nichrome are called alloys okay are called alloys so what are alloys? Alloys are homogeneous mixture of metals and cannot be separated into their components by physical methods. Okay? Alloy is considered as mixture because it shows the properties of constituents and can have variable composition. So some examples of alloys include bronze. Bronze is made from copper. Okay, It is made from mix, mixing copper, zinc and tin. Another example is amalgam. Amalgam is made from mercury and sodium. Okay, amalgam is made by mixing mercury and sodium. Another example we have here is stainless steel. Stainless steel is an alloy which is made up of iron, chromium, nickel and carbon. Another example we have is solder which is made up of lead and tin. Okay. Next, we have is solid liquid mixtures. Okay, so solid liquid mixtures means one of the components will be solid, one of the components will be liquid. So one example of homogeneous solid liquid mixture is salt in water. Salt is solid, water is liquid. So solid liquid mixture, and this is homogeneous. Another example of solid liquid mixture that is heterogeneous solid liquid mixture is water plus sand. Water is liquid, sand is solid, but it is heterogeneous. So it is a solid liquid heterogeneous mixture. Another one we have is liquid liquid mixtures. Both of the components in the mixture will be liquid in this case. Example of homogeneous liquid liquid mixture is water plus ethyl alcohol. Example of heterogeneous liquid liquid mixture is water plus oil. Both water and oil are liquid, but when we mix them, they form distinct layers, right? So they are heterogeneous. The next we have is gas liquid mixtures. Okay, one is homogeneous. Okay, homogeneous gas liquid mixtures. Example is water plus ammonia. Water is liquid, ammonia is gas. When we mix them, we will get water ammonia mixture and it is homogeneous. Example of Okay, this is not homo, this is hetero. Okay, example of hetero gas liquid mixtures is air. Okay, we have water. Okay, we have water, we have carbon dioxide. So, this is also example of gas liquid mixtures. Activity. Okay, activity. Take a beaker containing 50 ml of water and add one spatula full of copper sulfate powder in one beaker okay take another beaker containing 50 ml of water and add one spatula full of chalk powder or wheat flour okay then take another beaker containing 50 ml of water and add few drops of milk or ink so we have three cases here okay we will discuss about this three cases separately okay so for today's class we will go with this one okay so we have copper sulfate in water, wheat flour in water, milk in water. We will be discussing about this today. But before we proceed further, let us answer one more question. Please get your rough devices ready. The question is which of the following is a heterogeneous matter? Okay, I'm giving you 15 seconds for this question. Your time starts now. Which of the following is a heterogeneous matter? Option A is sugar solution. Option B is sugar and salt. 
Option C is sol solution. Option D is all of this. All right, students, your time is up. Sugar solution is homogeneous, so this is not heterogeneous. Salt solution is homogeneous, it's not heterogeneous. So all of this cannot be the answer. So our correct answer here is option B, that is sugar and salt. Very good, students. Now let us see, solutions, okay? Remember the first beaker, copper sulfate in water. We will discuss that, okay? So solutions, what are solutions? When we mix copper sulfate in water, we get copper sulfate plus water mixture, correct? So, let us see. When we mix copper sulfate in water, we get copper sulfate solution. Copper sulfate and water mixture, okay? So, what are solutions? Let us see, okay? A solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances, okay? A solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. All homogeneous mixtures are called solutions, okay? A solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances, and all homogeneous mixtures are called solutions. So let us see. Salt in water is homogeneous mixture. Copper sulfate in water is homogeneous mixture. Potassium permanganate in water is homogeneous mixture. So all of these are examples of homogeneous mixture. So this can be okay, written as salt solution, copper sulfate solution, and potassium permanganate solution. Okay, So a solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more components. Ammonium hydroxide then we have phenolphthalein in ethanol. These are also examples of solution, okay, phenolphthalein. All right, students, let us answer one more question. Please get your rough devices ready. The question is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substance is called which of the following, okay? I'm giving you 15 seconds for this question. Your time starts now. A homogeneous mixture of two or more substances is called option A, solution, option B, solvent, option C, alloys, and option D, none of them. All right, students, your time is up, and yes, good, the correct answer is option A, that is solution. A homogeneous mixture of two or more substances is called solution, okay? Let us proceed. Now, the components, there are two components in solution, okay? The component present in lesser amount and that is dissolved in other component is called solute, okay? So, here we are dissolving salt in water, yes? So, which one is solute, the salt or water? Let us see, okay? The component present in larger amount and that dissolved the other component is called solvent. So here we dissolve salt in water. Water is present in larger amount, correct? So in this example, salt is the solute and water is the solvent. Okay, so there are two components in solution, that is solute and solvent. Let us see. Solution, type of solution, solute and solvent. So we have brass, okay? Brass is a mixture of, is a solid-solid type mixture, right? It is made from copper and zinc. So, in brass solution, brass is a solid, solid solution. Okay, it is solution because it is a homogeneous mixture. So, here in brass, the solute is zinc and solvent is copper. Vinegar is liquid, liquid solution. Here, the solute is acetic acid and solvent is water. In soda water, it is the type of solution is gas liquid. The solute is carbon dioxide and solvent is water. The next we have is salt solution. It is of the type solid liquid. Solute is salt and solvent is water. So let us see the properties of solutions. Okay, what are the properties of solutions? A solution is a homogeneous mixture. Okay, it has same composition throughout. 
the particles of a solution are smaller than 1 nanometer so they cannot be seen by naked eyes okay when we dissolve salt in water we will not be able to see the particles of salt okay the next properties of solution is they do not scatter a beam of light through the solution even when we pass okay a light ray into this solution they will not scatter the beam of light the next we have is the solute particles cannot be separated by filtration method okay the solute particles cannot be separate by separated by the filtration method when we dissolve salt in water and try to filter it we will not be able to filter the salt particles because it is dissolved okay so this is another properties of solution okay concentration of solutions let us see okay what is concentration of solutions the solutions having small amount of solute is said to have low concentration it is known as dilute solution remember this okay students we have seen that in solution there are two components known as the solute and solvent okay so when there is small amount of solute in the solution it is said to have low concentration and it is known as dilute solution the next examples we have here of dilute solutions include dilute hydrochloric acid dilute h2so4 dilute hno3 so these are some of the example of dilute solutions the next we have here is the solution having large amount of solute is said to have high concentration it is known as concentrated solution okay so when the solution contains large amount of solute it is said to have high concentration and it is known as concentrated solution examples are concentrated hcl concentrated h2so4 and concentrated hno3 okay hcl is hydrochloric h2so4 is sulfuric acid and hno3 is nitric acid so here we have beaker okay different beaker we have five beaker potassium permanganate solutions of varying concentrations here we see five beaker here the color is very dark and the colors get lighter as we go as we move towards this side correct so here large amount of potassium permanganate is present here small amount of potassium permanganate is present so here the concentration decreases for towards when we move towards this side okay so here these are concentrated solutions and these are dilute solutions because it contain less amount of solute that is potassium permanganate in this case so the concentration of a solution is the amount of solute present in a given quantity of the solution okay the concentration of the solution can be determined by the amount of solute present in the given quantity of the solution now let us take this example again water in beaker 50 ml salt okay now add one spoon of salt into the water okay the volume increases to 52 ml but when it dissolves the volume decreases to 50 ml again yes students we have discussed this in our previous chapter it is because there is spaces between the particles of water now let us add another spoon okay of salt again it increases to 52 ml but after dissolving the salt again it decreases to 50 ml the original volume correct add another spoon 50 ml when it dissolves again it goes to 50 ml add another spoon of salt and dissolve it and see, let us see what happens it increases to 52 ml again but here the volume did not decrease so if we keep on adding salt into the small cup of water at one point okay the salt will stop dissolving okay so in at any particular temperature a solution that has dissolved as much solute as it is capable of dissolving is said to be saturated solution okay so at this given temperature the water in this beaker has dissolved as much salt as it is capable of dissolving after this it cannot dissolve any salt anymore 
yes so this solution is known as saturated solution okay saturated solution can be defined as when no more solute can be dissolved in a solution at a given temperature is called saturated solution okay and the amount of the solute present in the saturated solution at this temperature is called its solubility okay the amount of salt present in this solution at the given temperature is known as its solubility okay now let us see here if we add only one spoon of salt into the beaker containing water it at first it will increase to 52 ml but it will dissolve again yes now if, even if we add more we we know that it can dissolve dissolve some more amount of salt so if the amount of solute contained in a solution is less than the saturation level it is called an unsaturated solution okay so in this solution we know that more amount of salt can be dissolved all right because it has not reached the saturation level so this solution is known as unsaturated solution okay all right students we have another question please get your rough devices ready the question is in a sugar solution solute is okay which of the following i'm giving you 30 seconds for this question your time starts now so if you can recall the different components of solution okay we have two okay solute and solvent so in a sugar solution solute is which of the following option a is sugar option b is water option c is sugar and water and option d is none of this all right students your time is up and yes we know that solute is the component of solution which is present in lesser amount so here the correct answer is option a that is sugar okay option a sugar is the correct answer very good students all right students so we have discussed about mixtures today what are mixtures okay mixtures are constituted by more than one kind of pure substances okay so it is a mixture of more than one pure substances we have discussed that sand air water are all examples of mixture mixtures are of generally two types that is the homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures homogeneous mixtures are those mixtures which have uniform composition throughout whereas heterogeneous mixtures are those mixtures which have physically distinct parts and do not have uniform composition throughout we have also discussed about the different types of mixtures like solid solid mixture if we mix solid with solid okay we have seen the examples of homogeneous and heterogeneous solid solid mixtures we have also discussed about solid liquid mixtures liquid liquid mixtures and gas liquid mixtures yes students and we have discussed about solutions today dissolving copper sulfate in water we have two more beakers that we need to discuss we will do that in our next class okay now we have discussed about solutions what are solutions or what is a solution a solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances okay all homogeneous mixtures are solution it can be solid solid it can be solid liquid 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 gas or liquid all homogeneous mixtures are solution okay we have seen that there are two components in solution one is the solute the component present in lesser amount is called solute and the components present in larger amount is the solvent we have seen the properties of solutions a solution is a homogeneous mixture okay the particles of the particles of the solution are smaller than one nanometer we cannot see the particles of the solution with our naked eyes the particles of the solution do not scatter a beam of light and the solute particles in a solutions cannot be separated by simple filtration method we have discussed about the concentration of solutions okay when the solutions contain large amount of solute it is said to be it is said to have high concentration and it is called concentrated solutions whereas when the solution contains small amount of solute it is said to have low concentration and it is called as dilute solutions we have also discussed about saturated and unsaturated solutions 
when no more solute can dissolve in the solution okay when no more solute can dissolve in the solution at a given temperature it is said to be saturated solution and when more solute can be dissolved in the solution because the solution has not reached its saturation level it is said to be unsaturated solution we have also discussed about the solubility the amount of solute present in the saturated solution at a given temperature is called its solubility okay so these are some of the things that we have discussed in today's class we will discuss more in our next class okay so this leads us to the last question for today please get your rough devices ready and respond to this question I'm giving you 25 seconds your time starts now how do you feel about today's class okay kindly give your feedback about today's class option a is happy option b is quite good option c is satisfactory and option d is confused yes students how do you feel about today's class all right students your time is up thank you so much for your response and thank you for joining today's class i will see you again in our next class till then take care everyone and have a nice day